<laughs> Sexual assaults allowed in here. It's got in, made about four or five million USD. Just waiting for the little Miss Wifey. Oh, wow. They had no so idea that the poorest, broke. famous people ever. Do you have any friends that look just like you? Your hometown deciding to hate you out of nowhere? Sorry, I'm mate. stiffy, but he wouldn't feel it because it's so small. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you always wear protection. Meet Jackson O'Doherty. Jackson is one of the biggest social media creators in Australia and has also been a friend of mine for many, many years. Jackson and I both have started our social media careers back in 2014. And since then, he's gained an astounding 20 to 25 million followers on all social media platforms combined. Jackson's career hasn't been shy of controversy either. When back in the year of 2020, he got his entire Instagram account permanently deleted. Jackson's content has ranged from crazy viral pranks to taking care of a pet kangaroo, and then in recent times, delving into the mysterious world of OnlyFans. Jackson was also featured on Logan's Impulsive podcast and has rubbed shoulders with some of the biggest social media stars and celebrities in the world. I hadn't seen Jackson in around four years and I was keen to see how his life had changed since becoming a social media millionaire. I remember the times when he used to crash on my mom's couch when we were both broke but had millions of followers each. How did Jackson make over four million dollars from social media? What was it like hosting crazy Dan Bilzerian star parties at his Gold Coast mansion? And last but not least, was doing OnlyFans really worth it? It was now time to go and see my long lost friend. Here's the Barbie truck, guys. Oh, good. Good to see you, brother. At last, we finally realized. Oh, it's going on in ages. Oh, <laughs> well, you don't mind, do you? What? <laughs> Sexual assaults are loud in here. I told her. I told her something's going to happen. This is going to get in there and take your pants off. Oh, that's good. I'm manly whip. <laughs> Isn't there like a Barbie pattern, though? Oh, I took all the stickers off. Oh, did you? I kept them for like a week and I was just fucking over it. Come on in. <laughs> oh, hey. How are you, Guzzy? Good to see you, brother. It's been ages outside. I'll give you two of the old house. The old house was like a fucking, it wasn't even a house, it was just like an entertainment center. This is a home that was like a fucking, I don't know what you call that. But, <laughs> however, I am blessed and grateful for what I have. <laughs> you had to mention that part, didn't you? <laughs> Focus. Caffeinated gum. I don't know which one to look at, I just realized <laughs> Wait, I'm not even used to it myself. This is my new company that has officially just launched. It is zero calories, zero sugar. It's vegan, glutton free. The 80 milligrams of caffeine <laughs> absorbs through the glands under the tongue, so it kicks in relatively quickly. Done. It's a liquid core center. Right. Very strong, fresh, minty burst. Mm. Ooh. Very strong. You feel the gel first. Yeah, and then like core, liquid core. Mm, you feel the taste sensation straight away. It's actually nice. Then the roofies kick in. So the one thing I do like about this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you think of uh, my friend? He's funny. He is funny. I told you. I told you he's funny. What have you guys done though? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I like your community. That's so peaceful here, dude. Talk this is nice. the difference. Like my old house where I was throwing the parties and that was 10 times the size of this. It was definitely nicer. It was a cool resort vibe and that. It served its purpose, like for content, events, fun shit, memories and whatnot. I bought it for 2.95 and sold it for 3.15. Only in the space of a year. Cause I went through my breakup and I just had this random like midlife crisis. I was like, I need to change life a bit. I was like, I'm just, I can't be partying every weekend. I can't be on the fucking drinking, taking drugs, whatever the hell it is, you know? Mm. And so I got to do my spine surgery. I'm in the best physical and mental health shape I've been in my entire <coughs> life. Perfect friends, good family, all my family's doing well. I've paid off my mum's mortgage, she's chilling. So I can't complain, man, life's been good to me. Surprisingly enough, I've made probably less content the last couple of years, but I feel like I'm actually doing better in life than I was when I was making lots of content. Mm. I feel happier. It might not be as much money regularly, but like it's still more than enough to live, save, have a good life. Mm. For me, I do get a little bit bored of the same shit after a while. When you're doing a bit of vlogging, went really good. I'm a little bit bored of it, it's like, fuck, it stopped. Went traveling, went to the States, hung around Elk Boys, Jake, mm. Paul, Logan Paul, all the big social media dogs and had fun. Came home, got back into making some videos doing my podcast, had a little stint on OnlyFans with Maddie. Me and her went really hard for a year. People can think it's trashy or whatever, I don't care. I just got in, had a crack with my partner. I wasn't a single dude bouncing around fucking every girl with an OnlyFans page. I was like, fuck it, I saw an opportunity. I was already bored and tired of social media. And as you'd know firsthand, up until the last couple of years, social media has always been kind of hard to make money from, especially mm. if you do anything a little bit edgy. Mm. Thing. I was like, am I gonna do this? And if the answer is yes, then I'm going hard and I'm going to make it worth it because if I go in half assed people are going to remember that I got involved in that. I don't give a shit. I'm, I don't regret it. People can say what they want. Got in, made about four or five million USD. This from OnlyFans? Yeah, this is our old OnlyFans. Only fans. Oh, there's that. still 700 people. We haven't posted there in over two oh, years. Oh, so they're on a subscription? Yeah. Mm. What was your biggest month you ever had on OnlyFans? All time gross, 4.9 million Is that USD? Plus. Yeah, so it was around 4 million USD we did. 3.30 in our first month, 3.78. So you, start, wait, so you started April 2020? Yeah, well, technically at the end of March, but yeah, it rolled so over. When you hit, say, that month, what did you do to like promote? 
promote it. The flip switch challenge is going fucking nuts on TikTok. We filmed it, put it on Twitter, Instagram, put it, I took a risk. I said, fuck it, posted that with a watermark and it just went fucking viral everywhere. Cardi B reposted it, mm. Nicki Minaj had it on her story, Drake had it on somewhere at one stage. The first two days we had 44,000 people paying like 10 bucks a month to subscribe. Mm. You know, I spent probably over 300 grand on parties at the old house. I reckon I was having sex probably every fucking day. And now, oh. man, I never shag anymore. I'm so over, I'm just waiting for the little Miss Wifey. No way. Just waiting for the little Miss Wifey. Well done, I approve of that. That's that. All right, let's do an MTV Cribs uh, little uh, summary here. This is the ladies' room. Many people stuck in the washing machine. We won't There's a little storage behind you in there. You've seen the little gym room in here when you just walked in. Oh, the gym, yes. Bro, that's a sick gym. Woo! You want to see a jab? Yeah. Should we go for a little spa for the camera? So yeah, that's, that's my boxing bag. <laughs> All right, what's next? Opposite. This is the way. <laughs> uh, this is just a little random study room. <laughs> No way. Oh, I've seen this somewhere. This is just from the old house, the boxing ring. Wait, so what's what's Jackson's playground? That's what I called my old house where I was throwing all the parties oh. and it's just like an adult playground, you know what I mean? All right, so Lisa's a bit shy, but uh, <laughs> she as well as Jackson are the main events, not me. I'm just a host, you know? Do you have any friends that look just like you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the podcast set. Like okay. We rearrange shit here and there. You know what? Nothing here makes a lot of sense. So what's up here? This is normal for me guys, but maybe not for you. Just another spare room with heaps of random shit. Got five bedrooms here. Oh wow. That's a, uh, that's, that's you. That's the first bit of uh, nakedness I've seen in about three years. <laughs> this one's PG. She's still on Instagram every day. What are your but, thoughts um, on the photos? In here we've just got... Tennis foot. <laughs> this is your room I'm assuming? Yeah. Very nice, got the ensuite. It's nice waking up after that. It would be, eh? I saw your YouTube pluck. Oh man, I barely have done YouTube in a long time. Like, I don't know, same as you, man. It's like, I like to just try new things. If I get bored of something, even yeah. if it's making me money, if I get bored of it, I'm like, yeah. whatever, I'll just make less money and do shit I enjoy. That's how I've always been. That's how I always will be. All right, so Jackson, thanks for inviting me over to your house. Yeah. What's the most expensive thing you've ever bought? Probably a Lamborghini. How much did that cost you? $350,000. Wow. How do you think the social media landscape has changed since you and I started back in 2015, 2016 days? It's gone very short format content. The biggest change I've noticed is that it's pretty much possible for anybody to just become famous overnight because mm. of TikTok because their mm. algorithm is very discoverable and it's very favorable. You could be nobody overnight. You could be a sensation. Whereas back in the day, it was a lot harder to blow up or make a name for yourself or get viral content. Now it's like you could be anybody. You could film a man mowing your lawn and you're viral. Thank you. Sorry, that's mate. stiffy, but he wouldn't feel it because it's so small. <laughs> <laughs> Although we are in bed right now, it's a very interesting setting. You and I have been through a lot together. You know, we started at the same time. Do you remember back in the day when we were both very broke? Talk about that time and how hard it was for us to both make money. It was like going to a job not knowing if you're going to be paid or not. It's like going to work every day for months being like, fuck, am I ever going to get paid for this? I remember you and I like back in the 2016, 2017 days when, you know, we both had a couple mil followers on, on Facebook. Mm. Nothing was monetized. And you, me, Shami, were still like driving around in like our shitty cars and staying in each other's houses with our parents. We couldn't even afford anything. We experienced like a complete opposite life where we'd be swarmed in public, completely mobbed by fans. And they had no so idea that we're actually- the poorest broke. famous people ever. Literally we were. I've come to learn over the years with a little bit of maturity, if you will, is that you look back on those times and they were some of the best times Hard. of the journey. It's like, I have learned the hard way that it's not like the end goal that's the best part. It's like the whole process to get there. Like I remember I had a goal, like I'll get a million followers on Facebook, hit it pretty quickly. And I was like, okay, next goal is to hit 2 million. Then you hit it and you're like, fuck, am I just gonna spend my life chasing numbers. It's just like, it's kind yeah, of depressing. Yeah. I'm, I've been lucky, man. I've had a pretty much the same group of friends around me since day one. I've been good to my friends. They've all been good to me and I haven't really had many falling out. I don't wish anything bad upon anybody, whether we're friends or not. It's just the way life goes, but I've been pretty lucky to have a good solid foundation of good friends that I trust and care about me to help me. They've kept me in check when I needed to be, so. Love that. Oh, I you start waking on camera. <laughs> Did you meet her in Sydney? Yeah. In Chatswood? No, no, no. In Chatswood. <laughs> Yep. But for real, does she have any hot friends? Um, you have any hot friends? Oh, you <laughs> Hi, Jackson. Really appreciate uh, the house to it. Thank you very much for that. Now, um, we've seen the funny Jackson on camera that we all know and love, but I want to get a little bit deeper with you, if that's okay. all right, you know? Not, not that deep. 
Oh, not that deep, yeah. In this social media world that we both live in, talk us through sort of like, you know, how the career that we're both in has impacted your mental health. One thing for me was like, you want to grow up and eventually chase your dreams through these things. I think one of it is you kind of get what it is you want and then you get there and you're like, oh fuck, it's not all I thought it would be. There was no evidence or proof of any side effects or mental side effects or the shit to deal with of like the constant betrayal of friends you've had your whole life, your hometown deciding to hate you out of nowhere, whether it be that, whether it be people you just meet along the way who will use you, take advantage of you, pretend to be your friend just so they can get something out of you, then fuck off as soon as they get what they want. You put a bit of a target on your back when you put yourself in the public eye. That stuff can all come into do with it all, but I think, you know, going through life problems as well, like breakups, family problems, financial problems, health problems. I had a lot of health problems, man. My back was the beginning of a lot of my issues because taking pain pills every day affects your gut health. Your gut health goes to shit, so is your mental health because your gut and brain are very connected. Going through a breakup, you know, didn't have a girlfriend, didn't have this, was unsure of who my friends were, was losing friends, was just going through a lot. And then to go out in the public every day and people running up to you being happy filming you're doing this you're just gonna put a smile on be That's polite right. be no nice. one knows what you're actually going through and no one knows camera. and another thing is you're not allowed to have problems if you're in the public eye if That's you've got right. a little bit of money or a little bit of fame on the internet mm. you're not allowed to have problems all of a sudden look at someone like robin williams jim carrey you look at really famous people mm. some of them are the most depressed people in the world man That's i think right. money or status or fame or anything it doesn't necessarily bring happiness yeah i'd just say all those things combined man it can it can definitely take its toll over a while so mm. what would your final piece of advice be to anyone <clears throat> wanting to start social media like we have don't um, fucking do it, it's a trap. <laughs> That's kind of true. <laughs> nah, be yourself, just find out what it is that you actually enjoy. Don't alter yourself to make anybody else like you. It might take a little bit longer to attract a big crowd of fans, followers, or supporters, friends, whatever, but you'll attract the right quality people. You'd rather people like you and support you and follow you for who you really are, as opposed to pretending to be somebody else, because you can only keep up a fucking character and pretend like that for so long. You need to just be yourself, find out what works for you, be consistent, work hard, ignore the fucking outside noise and what people are saying about you. Just have a few goals and just keep working them until you get them and just try to be a good person and do lots of drugs. <laughs> I was waiting for the punchline. Thanks, brother. <laughs>